Well, I was waiting on the saints to keep dragging in. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. Who has a praise report? Boy, y'all are a bundle of excitement tonight here. <laughs> Good, praise the Lord. Did I see Leah? Well, praise the Lord. You don't mind getting called in for those things. Anybody else have a praise report? Praise the Lord. Somebody told me they felt like the Lord had healed them on Sunday. And praise the Lord for that. Amen. I don't see her tonight, so she may have had a relapse. <laughs> <laughs> All right, stand, please. I would be remiss if I didn't thank the Lord for helping me pass two kidney stones. Wow. Thank you, Lord, for that it's over. <laughs> uh, wow. Praise the Lord. Well, let's pray together. <clears throat> Lord, we thank you. You're so good to us. You're so wonderful. Thank you for your countless blessings you pour out upon our lives. We thank you, Lord, for these praise reports we've heard. We thank you, God, that your never-present help in our time of need. Lord, in all of the stress and strain of our uncertainties today, we thank you that you're there. And we look to you. We don't look to the White House. We look to you. Amen. We don't look to our Congress. We look to you. We know that you're our sustainer. You're our life giver. You're our provider. We bless you. We also know that you're our protection. You make a way where there doesn't seem to be a way. And we pray, God, that you continue to bless your people. We thank you for it in the name of Jesus. And everybody said? Amen. Amen. Open the eyes of my heart.
Take a moment and worship the Lord. Lord, we bless you. We honor you. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Well, turn around. Somebody high five and say, I'm glad to see you. Give them an air high five, whatever. You may be seated. Let's go ahead and receive our evening offering. Saturday is uh, 39ers here at 11 o'clock. I think it'll be a chilly meal. If you're over 39, you're welcome. And uh, you're going to have a great time. I know there's going to be at least chili and cornbread. So you're going to have a good time. Well, Peter announced that the heretic was going to be here tonight. That's right. <laughs> we don't think so. We love Peter. Yeah. Uh oh. Well, we can always straighten that out, whatever it is. <laughs> Would you give a big welcome to Peter Clark as he comes? Bless you, Peter. Yeah, that's what it says right on top of my notes. You may think the newspaper article was real after tonight. It says that right on my notes. <laughs> Father God, I love you. You're so cool. We're doing this for you, God. We're doing this too. Let people know about you and understand you and lift you up and enjoy you and experience all that you have. So that's what we're doing this all for. We're just not doing it just to teach and learn new stuff, God. That's not what we're doing. We're doing this because we want you glorified. We want you to be so a part of our lives that there's just no mistaking us for people that are filled with the Holy Spirit. So please, if I've got something to say tonight, God, you just go ahead and Make it really clear, and if i got stupid stuff to say, make that drop to the floor. I'm all, I'm all over that, too. So please come, Holy Spirit, and anoint your word and anoint what we're doing tonight. We ask that in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So I, I, uh, well, I can lift this thing up and walk around with this. Cool. All right, so I, I look at the Christian life like a tool belt on a, on a construction worker. I mean, you, you have all these different compartments around the outside for different things. You have hammers and chisels and tools and tape measures and, and whatever you need for the job. And so what I'm going to hopefully do tonight is just for some who want to take it. I, I bet, you know, half of you won't even track with me, but that's okay. The other half, if you do, that's great. But I'm going to give a tool. It's not to be used every day, all day. It's just a tool that if you haven't done this tool, then it's a good one to put in the tool belt and, and use when the time is right to use this, 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 uh, this tool. So it, my, my sermon's called The Hiding Place of God tonight. So when I was a hippie, I did transcendental, transcendental meditation. You have to go pay some money, and you go talk to this guy, and he gives you this magic word, and you learn how to repeat that word over and over and over and over and over and over and over in your head until you become completely mindless, and you go into an altered state, and, you know, that's, that's the whole purpose of the thing. I, 
I had a friend of mine who really liked it, so I, I, I did it because he did it, and I did it, and every time I wanted to go straighter, get out of my drugs a little bit, I'd go to my transcendental meditation, I'd be real careful about my diet, and I'd you know, be real ritual, ritualistic about it, but you know, it never did much. Actually, it did a lot for me, but I didn't like what it did. It made me feel more isolated. I, I didn't feel as spontaneous in my mind. It didn't do all the wonderful things that had been advertised in my life. So it, 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 it just wasn't working for me. But there is a thing called biblical meditation. There's a thing called that we're doing it because we're Christians. And, and it's a whole different realm. Back in the 80s, there was a guy named Dave Hunt. He was a big guy about apologetics and you know, pointing out errors in the church and things like that. And what he said about transcendental meditation was, it's the fact that you're basically leaving your mind on cruise. No one's driving. You know, and that anybody can come in and drive at any point, which I kind of agree. You know, you open yourself to spiritual realm, and these spirits can come in and talk to you and, and all that kind of stuff. So it's not a good thing to do. But biblical meditation, like it says, May these words of my mouth and this meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, Lord, my rock and my redeemer. So it's a different thing. You're focusing in biblical meditation. You're, you're, you have a, a point of access. You have a point of focus that you're trying to move into, and that's what you're meditating. You're not just letting your mind just idly go into, into cruise mode. So when I was first saved by this lady, uh, I was saved, but I, I went and was discipled by this lady who had, had been a pastor for many years, and supposedly over the years that she passed, she had all nine spiritual gifts by the time she was done. I didn't disagree. I don't know. I wasn't there, but I'll go ahead and believe her. And so there were two books that she gave me to study when I first became saved. And, and they became the foundations, really, of how I see, see life. The first one, I don't know if anybody ever heard it, it's called uh, Experiencing the Depths of Jesus Christ by this lady called Madame Guyon. She was a 15th century mystic. And my, my, my theory on mystics in the 15th century was they were actually born again and people couldn't understand it because no one else was. So they were actually hearing from God, receiving from the Holy Spirit, and all kinds of crazy things that nobody else understood. So they were labeled as mystics and put off to the side or killed or whatever they had to do to them. So this lady was one of those, and she got persecuted and put in jail and all that kind of stuff because she actually heard God. And she wrote this book, Experience the Depths of Jesus Christ. And, and the lady that was mentoring me, she basically said, you know, just go for the first three chapters and just do them over and over and over and over and over. To you. And I never went past the third chapter. I never did. Because the first three chapters was all I needed. And her basic theory is that since the Lord lives inside of us, the Lord, now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord, there is freedom. So the Lord is the Spirit. So, you know, you, you can get your Trinity fil filters all crazed up with that if you want to, but don't bother. Christ in you, the hope of glory. So Christ is in you. So her theory was, is that since Christ lives inside of us, which he does, that when you focus on the Christ within, when you, when, you, when you understand the Holy Spirit's inside of you, and you start adoring the Christ within you, he responds. He says, anytime you, anytime you adore the, 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 the Lord, he responds with love, he responds with a response. And so she would have this thing where she basically put it down to an analogy of a candle that's about ready to go out, and you just... You keep blowing on it softly to keep the candle going. When it's ready to go out again, you blow on it again. And this is, the, this is the theory that she had, basically, is that as you're adoring Christ, you adore him and you sense his Holy Spirit. And then when, when it seems to diminish, you, you adore him again. And you just, you just get this practice of discipline where you're actually adoring Christ and he's responding, and every time that he responds, you adore him, and you just work that out. They work that out. That was the whole theory of the book, and and that's what I attempted to do when I first got saved was just to worship the Lord internally and and, and adore him and worship him. You know, even it's just saying Jesus and having the Holy Spirit respond and go, okay, there you are, there you are, and you just kind of you try to work at keeping that constant. And there was another guy that we had the book that was called Brother Lawrence. It's called. Um, Practicing the presence of God. Anybody heard of that one? That's, that's pretty popular. Basically, he's saying that you can keep the presence of God all day, every day, if you know how. If you work at it. If it's something that's a priori uh, priority in your life, you can, by doing the same sort of technique, 
And it's not a technique. It's, 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 an, it's just focusing on the Lord and worshiping him continuously. You can stay in the presence of God all day long, but it doesn't come to the undisciplined. It doesn't come to those who don't try. It comes to those who are focused on that end. So you, however, are not in the flesh but in the spirit. In fact, the spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the spirit of God does not belong to him. So again, it's, it, it's, we're, all, we're the only ones that can play this game. We're the only ones that have the spirit of God in us to be able to worship in this sort of way. In fact, I have this test. I see a lot of people, this is kind of an aside, this is free, it doesn't cost anything. I have this test about, I see a lot of people trying to figure out who's saved and who's not saved. You know, based on their fruit, based on their performance, based on their, you know, how they talk or how they read the Bible or how often they go to church or all these criteria that you have. And this is the best test, I think, in the scriptures for salvation or not salvation. Paul gives it in 2 Corinthians 13, 5. Examine yourself as to whether you are in the faith. Test yourself. Do you not know yourself that Jesus Christ is in you unless indeed you are disqualified or fail the test? So the only one that can tell whether you're saved is you. And if you're aware that the Spirit of God is living in you, if you're aware the Spirit of God is functioning, that he's speaking with you, that he's interacting with you inside of you, then you're in the camp. You may have some things to disciple out. You may have some sins you may have to work through. But trying to figure out from the outside, some people do that. Maybe they're successful. I'm not. But I know that if I give them this test and I say, well, is the Spirit of God in you? Do you understand the Spirit of God in you? Can you sense him? Do you understand he's there? And if they say yes, I'm going with it. I'm going to say, okay, and we've got these areas we need to work out through discipleship, but that's a different deal. Okay, so tonight is the hiding place, the hiding in the Lord. And I think it's related to this meditation issue. Is it just a mental exercise, or is it a real place? Is there actually a place called the hiding place that you can be, as like you're here tonight in this room, is there a thing called the real place of hiding in the Lord? I think that we can. I think there's actually three places, and all three are spiritual, that we can hide in the Lord and find this place called the hiding place of God. Is, is it just a mental thing? Is it just, you know, I know these scriptures that tell me that these things are true, therefore I have a hiding place in the fact that I, I know these things. Well, yes and yes. It's part that. I'm not saying that's not it. I mean, the scriptures and knowing the scriptures and understanding the concepts behind the scriptures, absolutely. But I think it's also more than that. I think there's actually a physical reality or a spiritual reality to the, the hiding place. And so the first one is the mind. And the word builds a hiding place around you. As you use the word, it actually hides you from spiritual attack. It, and builds a wall against you and your flesh. It builds a wall against your, your outside world and the inside world. And it's done through the scriptures. And it's done through understanding and, and meditating on the scriptures. So I've got a bunch of... We're going to build one right now. We're going to build a mental hiding place right now using these scriptures. And, I can, and the way I see it is kind of like they're just around you. You, know, you, just, you just kind of array them around your mind. And, and, and when they're all arrayed, when you've got a bunch of them around you, then the thoughts of the world, the thoughts of the flesh, the thoughts of the enemy, the thoughts of, of the culture, they can't get through because you're blocked by these scriptures. So like when I say, you are a hiding place for me, you preserve me from trouble, you surround me with shouts of deliverance. But there's, have that one. Okay, and chew on that for a bit and put that right here. Okay. In the cover of your presence, you hide me from the plots of men. You store them in your shelter from the strife of tongue. Okay, you're going to keep me away from people's tongues and the plots that people have against me. Okay, got that over here. And then, for he will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal me under the cover of his tent. He will lift me upon a rock. Okay, I'm starting to get, I've got like, like three, three quarters covered here. We're doing good. You are my hiding place and my shield. I hope in your word. Okay, this word that I'm putting to practice here to keep things up. Because anything tries to come in, these scriptures are going to talk back at it. Really, ultimately, right? If, if, if trouble comes in and the, the, the tongues are against you and the world's, the culture is saying bad things about you, these scriptures, if you understand them, believe them, have them in your heart, they repel them. They keep them out. It's a hiding place within there. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. For you have been a stronghold to the poor, a stronghold to the needy in his distress, a shelter from the storm, and a shade from the heat. From the breath of ruthless, ruthless is like a storm against a wall. 
The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God. I mean, if you take, I mean, here's a whole sermon in this one, in this one scripture. We could take each one of these points and make a, a, a blockage. The Lord is my rock and my fortress, my deliverer, my rock, my God in whom I take refuge, my shield, the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. He who, and ultimately the, the, the great one, for he who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God, in whom I trust, for he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler, from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and buckler. You will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by day. Amen. Whew, man, if you had those around you, your mental place. If you had those around your mental place, what a place to be. So, if you got around your mental place, that reading all these scriptures, it means that nothing's bad going to happen in your life. Right? Is that, is that the conclusion? Well, I'm thinking probably not. You know, because we have a few examples in our lives of people or ourselves that have been through some really horrible things. So what does this mean? What, we just, just took all these scriptures, we just put them around us. What does it mean now? Well, I think if you're in the place that this is talking about, which is protected by the scriptures, you have them around you, you're in the place of his presence, you're in the place of the Holy One, that's where you're protected. That's where nothing touches you. That's where you, you can't have anything ultimately, eternally destroy you at all because you are in these scriptures, your mind is protected, but it doesn't mean that the things won't hit on the outside. The things don't, they will come and try to assault these things. But if you're meditating on the Lord, if you're meditating on these scriptures, if you're believing you're in the presence, the holy place, the hiding place of the Most High God, that's the safe place. That's the place you need to be as much as you possibly can because that's the only place you're in hiding, to me. Because people get their heads cut off. People get burned on poles with tar on them. People, you know, Mongol hordes come in and destroy, you know, Christian Europe. Horrible things happen to good people. But if this is, what this has got to be, it's got to be the fact that you're protected in that place called the hiding place. So the emotion would be the second part. We've got mind, emotions, and then I'm going to go to spirit. So emotion, the interaction with the spirit of God that changes and touches the emotion. We can tend to be in America very intellectual, very mental, very cerebral, and think this all through in a cerebral level. But there's, there's certainly that's not the whole story. There's certainly another whole aspect of this thing called the emotional realm, which, you know, I know men as a, as a rule and a, and a bell curve have a harder time getting there. Women can stay there much easier. And, you know, it's all sociological talk. But ultimately, there's, there's trends there. So the emotions interacting with the Spirit of God that changes and touches the emotions. There's a place, and we all know it, where the Spirit of God is interacting us, and we don't have a scripture necessarily in our head. We don't have a, 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 you know, some kind of theological doctrine going through our mind at that moment. We're just touching God. We're just messing with him. He's just messing with us. We're just, we're just interacting, and your emotions are stirred, and your emotions are, are uplifted, and your emotions are made to feel all kinds of things that it may not, you probably couldn't even explain with your mental facilities. And that's where we're going to go tonight. That's, that's what I'm hoping. We're going, to, we're going to play in that realm a little bit tonight and see what you think. We're going to take you some play, weird places. So anyway, so finally, the spirit. The deep place, it's not your emotions. It's not your mind. It's called the spirit, the man's spirit within him. And this place is here, the deep place that's nourished by the word, that's that's nourished by the emotional realm. It's, it's fed by these things, but it's the place where peace and joy come. It's that place where, because you've nourished it with the word, because you've been in the emotional realm with God and you've received from that, there's a spirit realm that says, I got peace no matter what. I got joy no matter what, because I've been diligent in the other two areas. It's like, a, it's like it filters down into the spirit realm, and the spirit realm is the thing that, it's the joy of the Lord that keeps, gives us strength. So it's not the emotional realm, it's not the mental realm, it's the spirit realm that gives us strength. So this, this whole sermon came from an experience. I, I, I said it one night at the, at the prayer group, but if you don't come, you don't get to know. But uh, <laughs> just kidding. I had an experience a couple weeks ago. I mean, it's pretty current for me. And 
I had been, I'd just been going through this really rough period where there's all these trials and all these things going on, lots of pressures, all kinds of crazy stuff. And I was saying, God, you've got to take me out of this. You've got to get me out of this. You've got to get me out of this. You've got to, you got to take care of me. You've got to take care of me. Come on, come on, come on, come on. And he wasn't. So I started to say, okay, well, you must have something really special for me that you're going to do in my spirit because I'm going through all this stuff. You're really going to make something in my spirit that's really unusual because this is really insane. And so... After that, I, I, I started to sing the song, My Hiding Place. I don't know, can we play that song, Tom? I was supposed to do it at the, it's at the beginning, but this actually works better. Thank you, appreciate that. Good, I like it. Okay, so you got the lyrics, and this is the song. I thought you guys all knew this one, but he didn't know it that well, and so let's just do it. song, just out of curiosity. I guess this must have been a Foursquare thing or something. I don't know. That's where I grew up in Foursquare. So, so that song started to percolate in my spirit, and I, and I just started singing it a lot, and I was thinking, oh, this is interesting. And then I went to prayer one night, and I just had a very spiritual experience where I went to this place, and it was a hiding place, and I was, I can remember I was kind of bent over. It didn't last forever. It just last, I don't know, five minutes. Who knows? And I just was so aware of how big God was. I was just so aware of his power. I was, and, and it felt like there was a ceiling above me hundreds of feet high, you know, where, where God was over me in this huge place. And I just, and it was just an amazing experience. And so it's kind of like one of those little markers in the sand or those little, when you build up rocks on the side of the road. I don't want to forget this place. I don't get to go there all the time, but I got to go. And it was fun. It was awesome. And I was, I was thinking, you really are big. You really got this under control. You really are powerful. You are really all that I need. I got it. I got it for a minute because I, I went there. I didn't think there. I went there. I felt like I was really there. It was kind of cool. I'm, I'm not, I was in the third heaven. And I, I saw things that you're not supposed to say. No, not necessarily, but... So I'm going to try to go there a little bit tonight. We're talking about, I think that, you know, if you live only in the brain, you're, you're, you're lacking something. If you only live in the, th in, the, in, the, in, the, in the intellectual, then you're not getting the whole story. If you're only living in your emotions, you're not getting the whole story. You've got to have a blend. And so tonight, we're going to try to get, see if we can get to work the emotion side a little bit, you know. I call it the worship muscle because... I don't know if you know, but worship requires effort. And if you, if you work it, you can do it better. If you work it, you can do more. I mean, like, some days I can only, you know, worship for 10 minutes. But some days I can worship for an hour, you know. And, and I, know, I know when I was in that Bible study down in Ennis, and two hours of worship was nothing. We would just go. We would just be fine, you know. No, no teaching, no scriptures, no nothing. We just sang new songs, sang old songs, and we just worshiped, and it was just wonderful. And it was, the time would just fly. It was great. So here's a tool for the bell. So, and, and this is also going to be a help. Here's, here's my, uh, how are we doing on time? We're doing good. So here's my, uh, 
here's my music speech. I got a music speech. And so I want to get my music. Now we're going to go off. This is an aside, again, free. You no, know, it doesn't cost anything. This is the, my, my music speech for those who hate mindless, repetitious choruses. Okay. Because, I mean, every, I hear it so often. Well, the old songs have such good doctrine, you know, and now these new songs are just mindless repetitions is all they are. And back in the day, we had good doctrine in our songs. I said, I'm in so I've been, I've been tracking this ever since I caught that wind. You know that a lot of your old songs are mindless repetition, but you don't notice? Do you know that there's a lot of good songs today that are good doctrine, but you don't notice? Do you know that the reason that your old songs are so good because all the bad songs fell away? All you've got left is the good. You picked out the ones you liked, and you took 50 out of 5,000, and you call them the old songs, and they're, every time you hear them, they're good because you, they were good back then, they're good now. But it's the same today. There's 5,000 songs out there that are junk, but there's 25, 50 songs that are priceless, God's breathed today message. Got to know it today because God's doing a new thing and he wants you to use this song to battle and to, to overcome and to understand and to see things different. And so, yeah, I'm sorry. You're going to have to filter through the guys that are making money. You're going to filter through the guys that just want to put out an album. You're going to filter through the guys that, that don't have a clue what God's doing today. But there's people out there that have just as good, um, you know, old song as new. And so it's, I'm, that's my music speech. So, so watch your own songs. If you think that, oh, they're just mindless repetiting that same chorus over and over again, you'll do the same thing. Watch yourself. I exalt thee, I exalt thee 77 times. You know, same deal, same deal. So, and, and, so, and so what, I don't know, one other point on this message, message thing is that when we're doing the mindless repetition thing, what we should be doing is what we're going to learn about tonight, which is worshiping the Lord outside of our brain. Our brain isn't so engaged. It doesn't have, you know, you're not thinking through doctrinal points. You're just worshiping God. And you're not worried that you're singing the same repetitious thing over and over again because you're worshiping God. And that's your entertainment. That's your point of contact. That's the place where you should be focusing on, not that hey, we're going to do that course one more time. Come on. No, I get to just kind of be in his presence for another turn of the course. And that's where you need to, you need to think about that. That's, how it, that's what you're supposed to be doing. Now, if you can't do it, get your muscle going. Figure out how that works. Think, 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 think about how does that play in my life if I'm not emotional. Well, you can work on that. Because we had things like, in, in, in the, when I was you know, hanging out in Ennis, we had these things called 24-hour burns in Ennis. Have you ever heard of a burn? You worship for 24 hours. And you have these different, you have, you have, they'll, call, they'll go in, one band will play, another band will play, another band will play, another band will play, and they'll play sometimes in the spirit, sometimes in the English, and sometimes in anything else, or just instrumental. For 24 hours, we're doing this. That seems crazy, doesn't it? But it can be done. Worship muscle. Worship muscle. It's a good, it's a tool in the tool belt. Doesn't have to be done every day, but when you've when you got to do it, it's a good place to be. In fact, a lot of people prophesy that in the, in the revival, we're going to see no-name people in coliseums with it completely filled just playing spontaneous music. It's possible. It's possible. No, no big stars, no big names, just spirit of God guiding the people on the stage where thousands of people worship spontaneously. Kind of cool. So... I, I find, again, I want to keep backing this up. Is this real? Can you have this? Is this part of the scriptures? Are we going off on the deep end again like the heretic always likes to do? 1 Corinthians 14, 15. So what shall we do? I will pray with my spirit, but I'll also pray with my understanding. I will sing with my spirit, but I'll also sing with my understanding. Paul knew this. He had emotional and he had a cerebral sort of sense where he was doing English or, or his Arabic or whatever, Greek, simple Greek. And then also times he was just singing without the brain necessarily all that engaged. He was just in the spirit, singing these new stuff. And I, I think this is something that God's restoring back to the, bo the body. You know, I've been going through, thinking lately about how long it takes God to restore stuff. Do you realize it took, you know, 200 years from Martin Luther just figuring out that salvation by his faith before the gifts even started to come back again? You know, they had to go through the whole holiness. It took him hundreds of years to restore the church. 
So I think this is another one of those areas that he's restoring this aspect of the spirit worship where it's spontaneous, it's not cerebral, it's not necessarily written down. It's just we're just working in our spirit to, to honor God. So, actually, I saw I was, when, I was, when I was doing this sermon, uh, I saw this guy that has this video. You can go watch it if you want. He speaks in tongues for 10 hours. In fact, in fact, there's a, a, people, a couple comments down there. Well, at the sixth hour, I was doing this. And the ninth hour, I was doing this. There was other people doing this. It's on there. And, he, and they went along with him for, for, for 10 hours doing this thing. So that guy's got his muscle going. But... Because so, I've had some wonderful experiences in this, and myself. Just a couple months ago, I was in I was in the um, in the in the sanctuary, and I was here doing some computer work, and I was, had to test the sound system. So I found this uh, two or three hour instrumental piano praise worship. No no lyrics whatsoever. Just a piano. This guy who's evidently somewhat spiritual just plays the piano spontaneously for two or three hours, and I, I started. Worship into that, and by the time I was done, I was singing new songs, singing in tongues, having a wonderful time. About an hour and a half later, I was just, woo! That was great. That was awesome. I like that. I mean, I'm all right with that. So I, I think that there's this thing called, well, actually, one more thing. Singing in tongues. Singing in tongues. I want to tell you my experience, and I, I, I don't know how it works, but this is what my experience was. When I first got saved, got baptized pretty quick in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, in tongues. So I, 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 sang, I talked in tongues everywhere I went. I didn't have a car, and I, and I just walked everywhere. So I just spoke in tongues everywhere I went. And I always tried to sp- sing in tongues. I figured, you know, it's what you should do. So I kept trying to sing in tongues. It just never worked. It was just like awkward and it didn't sound right. And I was in the back of my house in Redlands, California. It's about the only thing I remember about the house is this experience. And so I'm just trying to sing in tongues and all of a sudden it just kicks in. It, just, it was a gift that God gave me to sing in tongues. And so at this point in my life, I could sing in tongues for two hours if I wanted to. I just can. New melodies, and then they'll translate into English, they'll translate to tongues, then they'll go into new melodies, and, and, and sometimes they're just absolutely fantastic. And every time I try to do it in, per, in public, it comes out garbage. But, <laughs> but me and him, you know, I, what I've got, I've got this little tape recorder next to me, and I always think, go oh, on, just record that and play it to him later, because you get in this deep sense of the Holy Spirit, and then all of a sudden this beautiful, I mean, it can be rap, it can be uh, classical, it can be contemporary, I mean, all kinds of different styles come out too, it's crazy. So what we're going to do tonight, there's something in the contemporary world called soaking. Anybody heard of soaking? Okay. Anybody soaking? Anybody know about soaking? Oh, yeah. Anybody else? Nobody? Well, okay. We're going to, you know about soaking? Cool. All right. Soaking is, you go, you go do, a, do a, um, a, a search on YouTube for soaking music. You're going to get 47,000 hits. I mean, they're out there two hours, three hours long, and there's all kinds of different styles. So what we're doing here, I think, is we're taking a 15th century mix, a mystic, and we're combining them with contemporary music or contemporary expressions of music. And so that we're kind of getting that whole thing. So I have one more biblical example that's going to say that I'm okay, that what we're doing is good, that I'm biblically backed up and you can't say I'm a heretic yet. First Samuel 23. Whenever God's spirit came to Saul, David took the lyre and strummed the tune. Saul got relief from his terror and felt better, and the evil spirits left him. I think it was, as far as I can tell, it's instrumental. As far as I can tell, David didn't sing while he was playing the lyre. He just was spiritually in tune. We'd play these songs, and Paul was minister, I mean, Saul was ministered to. So that's my biblical basis, if you want one, and you can have that. Because so, we have a hard time getting the quieting the noise of life because life is so loud. Life is so darn loud. To quiet it, is, it takes effort. So I'm taking these little helpers that God's given me through the internet and things like that to do this. So we all have a little training. We all have a little training in this. We've all touched this a little bit. We even touched a little bit tonight when the pastor said, let's just praise for a second or let's just honor the Lord for a second. So we did it for, I don't know, 15, 20 seconds. Sometimes we go, oh my gosh, maybe 30 seconds in the, in the, in the, in the, in the um, sanctuary uh, in between songs. But I'm going to proposition to you that you could do that for hours. Yep. You can do that for a long time and it's not boring and it's not repetitive and it's, it's interactive with God and that you can get something from that if you do it. You know, if you train yourself, get your muscle going. 
So, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to soak. A little, we're going to try it. Psalms 22, 3 in King James. But thou art holy, O thou, that inhabitest the praises of Israel. We're going, to t- we're going to go to a place that doesn't matter who's president or what life is like. We're stepping into eternity time. Because God is enthroned on the praises of his people. It means that you make a seat for him to sit down. When you enthrone him, you say, have a seat, Lord, because I've praised you. And you make it, you're almost like you're making a chair for him to sit in. So I, I, I got one, one other example before we go do this. And uh, I, I've, had, I, I, I've done this a couple times. It doesn't happen every day. But when I go to pray, sometimes I really do imagine a hole right here. And I say, I'm going to eternity, excuse me. And I will walk into the hole, and come on the other side, and, I, 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 and, and, and I'm believing that I'm in eternity time, where there's no space-time dimension. There's, it's far beyond that. I'm a place where everything's already happened, everything that's going to happen, everything did happen, and I'm in the presence of Almighty God. And that's where we have to live. That's ultimately where we're going. That's the, that's the intent of everything we're doing tonight, is to try to get through that hole, get out of this... uh, length, width, and time place and go into that place where everything is already taken care of. And that's what we want to understand. Okay, so let's see here. i got to get my phone. Hopefully it's going to work. So I I picked a couple places that uh, we're going to try out. Now, The first one I'm going to play is um, a lady who knows how to do this really well. And so we're going to listen to her do it and then we're going to try it. So this is only two minutes long. How many minutes one time? 48. We're, oh, God, you're so good. So anyway, so this, listen to this list. I hope this is going to work. Just play, okay? You listen over there. You just play. Come on. So she's praying. She's talking to God. There's music just playing in the background. Okay, so I, I hope you could hear it better than I could because my ears are all plugged up. Because, can, can anybody hear any lyrics, any, any what she was saying at all? So there's a lady who knows how to do this. She has albums out, a bunch of them, and she, she, then she'll go to a regular song and she'll go back to this kind of soaking thing where she's just worshiping the Lord in prayer, worshiping the Lord in just adoration, just looking at him and saying, you're, really, you're, you're, you're the most awesome. And then I got one, now this one here, we're going to do it ourselves. Now, this one here is actually 30 minutes long. We're not going to do this because your muscles aren't big enough. So there. <laughs> but 
we're going to try it here. Well, oh, come on. I had this all set up tonight. Hmm. Well, I got some other history I can use. I go, oh, there he is. Okay, so this is, this is a guy named Eric Gilmore. It's 30 minutes long. I picked it because that's violin. I really like the violin. So I picked it because I like the violin. But you can, there's piano, there's violin, there's all kinds of stuff. And so this is actually in a church service where nobody sings a word for 30 minutes. Everybody just meditates on Christ. And you can see their faces. I can see their faces. You can't see their faces. They're into it. They're going. Hallelujah. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of talk. And at some point, I'm not going to talk. And you go ahead and play your own your own words, so that you can play this too. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, we love you, Lord. You are the most awesome God there is. Jesus, I just speak your name. I just speak your name, Jesus, because it's worthy of being spoken. You are the greatest God. You are the only God. You're so full of love. You're so full of grace. You're so full of goodness. Your thoughts are towards us, and they're always good towards us. So Jesus, I just love you. I just love you, Lord. I just love you, Lord. Holy Jesus. Holy Jesus. Holy Jesus. Holy Jesus. God. God. You just are. You're just all I need. You're just all I've ever wanted. You're just all that there is in life because it's just you. Jesus, we just love you. We just thank you, Jesus. We just thank you, Jesus, because all you've done for us and all you're doing for us and all you will do for us. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Bless your name, Lord. Bless your name, Lord. Bless your name, Lord. Okay, you guys, go ahead. Talk to him. Bless him. Love him. Let him respond. Feel his Holy Spirit. You could do this for a half an hour. You could do this for an hour if you practiced. And you're going to get some fruit out of it. So go ahead. I'm going to be quiet. You go ahead and love your God in your spirit that dwells in you. Thank you, Lord. If anybody feels like singing, sing. Hallelujah. Ole ano so de isha nero, ade asundo rame ada. Ore asundo rame asera. Shane ora sande isha deo. Ore asande rano ramea. Shande aro no ramea sura. Alleluia. 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 Oreya sundura mea We love you, Lord. 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 We love you, Lord.
Halleluja. Halleluja. Holy Jesus. Okay, well, this is going to be hard, but I'm going to turn it down. I'm having a really good time here. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to experience you, be to hear your, hear your voice and feel your presence. Thank you, Lord, for making talented people that can do this, God, and allow us non-talented people to enjoy it. Thank you, Lord. All right. Okay, so if anybody says, do you know what soaking is? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've done, done it lots. I know what it's all about. I know all about soaking. So that's soaking. That's what kids are doing, these crazy kids that we're raising these days in churches that we don't even want to go to. So um, I'm trying to slow down. I'm so hurried in life. I take my prayer time the same way as I do my job. I've got 15 things to do. I better get them all done right now. So my prayer time, I, I run into it like that. Okay, I've got to intercede. I've got to worship. I've got to speak in tongues. I've got to repent of my sins. I've got to... It's not, I'm not going to make it. If that's what I'm doing, I'm not going to get there. I'm not going to get to where we just were at all. So I'm trying to slow down. Because, because when you feel the mind of Christ take over, isn't it awesome? Isn't it just awesome when you're in his presence and all of a sudden... You're not in your carnal head anymore. You're in this place where you're hearing God and you're, and you're actually receiving from the Holy Spirit and, and it's all different. There's a clarity that just kind of comes with the mind of Christ. And, and again, this is not an either or. I'm just either mental or I'm emotional. No, it's an and and an and. You need to be both. And if, you, if you're not emotional, work on it. If you're too emotional, then work on getting into the head realm a little bit more. Because a lot of people, I hear people saying things like, well, I'd rather preach the gospel than do politics. No, you can do both. You can do politics in Jesus Christ, and you can preach the gospel in Jesus Christ. There's time enough for both. I've had people even tell me things like, I'd rather know the scriptures than speak in tongues. No, dude, you can do both. You can actually have a better time with the other thing. So adding to soaking to your tool belt. So I, 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 my, my conclusion, boy, this is awesome, 759. Pastor, we're good. That means it's anointed. Um, I wrote this little Solomon-like ending to my to my uh, pat, to my thing here, and, and, and you know it's framed on Ecclesiastes a little bit, and, and, and it kind of speaks in the fact that to, we're just adding tools to our tool belt. We're just being in Christ isn't a one-way deal. You're, it's many faceted. There's many areas that you have to work at to become good at: scripture reading, prayer, intercession, spiritual warfare, whatever. So this is my last, this is my little Solomon-like uh, ending to this. There's a time to be meek, a time to be aggressive, a time to be quiet, a time to be loud, a time to talk, and a time to shout, a time to speak in English, a time to speak in tongues, a time to confess your weakness, Lord God, I can't do this without you, a time to affirm your strength, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. There's a time for the old, and there's a time for the new. And so with that, I just, this is new. But it's really not. 15th 15, 15th century mystics, mystics did this, what we're doing tonight. But it's coming back to the church, and, I, and, I, and it's very popular in many churches. And, and it, can, it can get out of hand. So all you're doing is you know, staring at your navel all day. That's not the point. But this day, when you put this in your tool belt, and, you, and when you need to soak, go soak. And then come back and pray in the kingdom of God if you need to. Father God, thank you for showing up tonight. Thank you for allowing us to experience your presence. Thank you for doing new things in the body. Thank you for giving us multiple expressions to know you and understand you. Thank you for allowing us to have minds and emotions and spirits. Thank you, God, that you've made this this multifaceted gem that we are, God, made by your hands that can be so many different things and go in so many different directions all at the same time. And God, I just pray that tonight, God, that somehow, someplace, God, we found a new way to experience you in a deeper way, God, that we might hear your voice and get free from the noise of this life and all the things around us. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Peter. This is uh, a whole lot older than a 15th century mystic. Yeah, right, exactly. A psalmist. 
was doing this. God says, you know, I'm going to pick me a king that's after my heart. He writes songs about me. He writes love letters to me. So there's nothing heretical about tonight. <laughs> Worshiping God should be a natural thing for us. And you should not be ashamed to soak in his presence. You shouldn't be ashamed to sing in tongues. I do it often. Shouldn't be afraid to pray in tongues. We, uh, we are physical people, but we are also spiritual people. Amen. Thank you, Peter, for reminding us what's important. Stand with me. <clears throat> Raise your right hand. May the Lord bless you this week. May you be acutely aware of his presence wherever you go, whatever you're doing. And may there be a song in your heart. May you worship him day and night. May you exalt him with words, without words, with your life. Be blessed spiritually, physically, emotionally, financially, and relationally. I bless you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.